hello again. Now we will store the user info inside uh, the local storage of the browser locally using a library called blazor.localStorage. We will create a specific model for that user that actually has four properties, access token, first name, last name, or full name, uh, email, and ID. And we store this object locally inside the local storage of the browser. So I will start first by going to models and create a model just for the Blazor application not shared between the clients. I will call it local user info. Okay, it's going to have string ID, string first name, public string last name, public string access token, public string email address. Okay, like this, that's good. Now I can close this, go to new get package manager console dependencies manage. Here, search for blazer dot local storage, like this. Yeah, this one. And hit install. Okay. Now we can close this. Go to the Solution Explorer and program.cs. Here I have to inject that service. Builder.services.add blazer local storage. Import the library blazer.local storage like this. Yeah. Okay. After that, I will go to the imports and import it here to be able to use it in my all components now i will go to the login login component here okay before i have printed the list of or the dictionary of user info i have seen the item dot key item dot value first i have the email then the name identifier or what or the id first name and last name so i will remove this from here we don't need it anymore it's just for uh, to show what what was inside now here i will create an object of type local user info i'll call it user i will remove this dictionary as well user info equals to new local user info planner app dot client dot models dot local user info like this and let's set that value first the access token is the result the user manager response we have received from the api dot message then the email which is the first value in the uh, user info dictionary result dot user info this one Let's call it first name like this or sorry the email first name then result dot user info first name last name equals result dot user info last name and the name identifier if you remember the name identifier was a long name because we have used the already claims type defined in asp.net or defined by .net so id is equals to result dot user info the name of it is claim types claim types dot name identifier like this so we can just import the library system dot security dot claims dot 
flame types. Uh, sorry, flame types like this. Name identifier. It's already defined. There is many other already defined uh, flame types, but I have just used this one. At the end, it's just an key, which is a string, and a value, which is a string. This is the claim. Okay, this is our user info object we want to store locally. Now, to store that, I will inject another service called uh, ilocal storage service. Call it storage service like that. Then here, await storage service dot set item async. The item is of type local user info I can copy it and the name is I would call it user the key and the object is user info okay what's going on ah sorry we don't need to define this because it detects the type from the object that's existing here so that's it very simple have you this is the blazer local storage we can just say storage service dot set item async after inject that service and you can store that locally so i will run the project to see if everything's working good okay let's go to authentication slash login hit okay now I will hit F12 to open the developer uh, developer tools. Here you can go to the application. This is a local storage. Click on the current website. So this is a user. I have already defined it before. I can click delete when I was testing. So when I click login, okay. We have logged in successfully and this is our user. You can see the content. This is the access token, the email, the first name, the ID and the last name. Okay. Now the next step is going to be to create an authentication state provider, implement our own. We will call it uh, JWT authentication state provider. Then we will populate the user property in the blazer or the, or the context by converting this user into a set of claims or an object of type claims a principle which represents a user in a speed only core and even here in blazer so see you in the next video